A while ago, Nick recreated our entire Mr. Beast Burger menu at home. Let's take a bite. Mr. Beast Burger yet again confirmed to me that Smash Patties can't be beat. And now I want to one-up it, okay? I want you to make our entire menu, but a Michelin star restaurant. Challenge accepted. Let's see. One thing I didn't consider is that when I'm with Jimmy, I can get all the Beast Burgers I want for free. Now that I'm back home, I actually have to buy the food myself. Maybe that's why he challenges you guys. He's just a clever businessman. All right, I'm just gonna order a bunch of different stuff so I'll have plenty to play around with. We'll go with two Beast Style Triple Burgers. I'm gonna add the extra beef patty to both. That makes for a quadruple burger. And I'll also add on some caramelized onions. Then I'll do a few orders of crinkle fries, some seasoned, some not, and that should do it. On the way to pick it up, I will remind you to smack that subscribe button below. We're trying to pass Gordon Ramsay and sub but we need your help. Just like last time, it appears the Beast Burger is at a Bertucci's restaurant. Is he here though, like the Mr. Beast guy? Oh no. Oh, he's not here? Okay. Come on in, Manny. I think it's right there. Yeah. Look, man. We're gonna ask you not to be filming. There you go, you're all set. Thank you very much. Secured the bag. They didn't love us recording in there. Waiting for these guys to leave because I'm uncomfortable. But the important thing is that we're ready to turn this to Michelin star. Today we have one goal and one goal only, and that's turning Mr. Beast Burger into a Michelin quality dish. I almost feel like this happened last time, but Mr. Beast gave us way too many ketchup packets. Let's see what we're working with here. First, I've got one of my triple decker burgers. Just as I expected, this thing right here is a beast. Glad they call it Mr. Beast Burger. We have a second version of the exact same thing. And Mr. Beast, I gotta say, your team at Bertucci's is making some excellent smash patties. I guess that guy that didn't want us filming is quite the chef. Now, last but not least, we have four different containers of fries. These ones here are unseasoned, which means that these are seasoned. Though, if I'm being honest, I don't see that much seasoning here anyway. Mr. Beast, I bit my lip again. I was just eating sweet green while I walked, and I bit my lip so bad. There's a lot of blood. I might have to throw in the towel. Good. So I'm good. Mr. Beast, bump up the seasoning. I'm only going to use the unseasoned fries. What I have in front of me is three triple decker beast burgers, a gigantic pile of crinkle cut french fries, and a bunch of ketchup packets. I'll tell you what we're gonna make in a second, and I'm confident it'll blow your mind. But first, we need to do some deconstruction. I'll start off here by squeezing all of our ketchup packets into a bowl, because we're gonna be using these for some caramelization and flavor. Actually, I'm gonna save this last one to show you something. Most people rip these ketchup packets and then pour them on some surface to be able to dip stuff in. Hey guys, Editor Brandon here. Nick wanted me to show you what he's talking about. My kitchen's a little smaller than Nick's, but size isn't everything. Let's open some ketchup. Here, I've got some McDonald's French fries. I'm gonna pour these out on a plate, and these taste great, but they're even better with a little bit of Osmo Flaky White. Something! And here, I've got a bag full of ketchup packets. What is this? Manny, did you put this in here? You're fired. Now I'm gonna take these ketchup packets one by one and I'm gonna pour them out onto the plate. This is awful. I've got ketchup all over my hands. There's ketchup all over the table. I couldn't even get all the ketchup out of the packet. Nick, what do I do? In our recent video, we tested 100 of the most popular food hacks, where we found that if you cut off the top instead, you can perfectly dip a fry inside for an easy, no mess solution. Now that step one is complete, we'll move on to our fries. Nick, spill the beans. What are we making? I'm going to turn Mr. Beast Burger into a beef wellington. And these fries that you're looking at right here are soon going to be mashed potatoes. Once these are all chopped up, I'll transfer them to a plate for now, and we'll move on to our burger. What's going on in your head, Manny? Not much. <laughs> no? Come on. What do you mean, not much? I don't know. Just think about the video. This video? Yeah. What about it? Not much. What's, what's happening next? I'm trying to see where you're going with this. You are? Yeah, I'm kind of curious, yeah. Are you? It's always something cool, yeah. Oh, thanks, Manny. It's really nice of you. <laughs> We'll start by getting rid of these buns because we're not going to be using those. However, if you look at the bottom of this bottom bun on the Beast Burger, we've got all sorts of onion and pickle. And while I don't need these pickles, we are going to save this onion. I'll set down my burger patties and do the exact same thing with this other burger here. For turning these fries into mashed potatoes, I'll start with a hunk of butter, then go in with all my chopped french fries and cover these up generously with a bunch of heavy cream. I'll follow this with a nice pinch of salt and then set this behind me to simmer. I'll start in the rest of our beef wellington by going in with just a little bit of oil. And when the oil heats up, in with our onions. I also want to get some caramel flavors from this ketchup, so in I go with a nice scoop of ketchup, which I'm using here the same way I would use tomato paste, and I'll give this a nice stir. At this point, I'll add in my burgers to start to concentrate that flavor and also render off a little bit more of that fat. While that happens, I'm continuing to caramelize that ketchup and those onions. When these are complete, I'll set them aside once again, and now I'll deglaze my pan, first with some water, and then with a bit of beef broth. It's kind of nice that it's a small hole. And now you have officially carried it too far, buddy. Oh!
I'll set this back with the mashed potatoes. Our fries that should soon be mashed potatoes have been going for about 10 to 12 minutes. And as you can see, they're starting to break down. While it might be your first instinct here, we don't want to put this in a blender because a blender will make mashed potatoes gummy and disgusting. Instead, we just want to continue stirring and slowly mashing these up. And ultimately, we'll push them through a strainer to get the perfect smooth mashed potatoes that'll complement our beef wellington. To finally assemble our wellington, I'll go down on my puff pastry dough with my three layers of patties. And I'll top this off with one or two more patties. Now here we have an egg wash with two eggs and about a tablespoon or two of water and I'll paint right around my beef wellington to make sure I can really seal the edges and then very gently go over with my top layer. And then given how delicate this dough is, I'll slowly press around the sides and all the edges, making a few folds along the way to ultimately seal up our wellington. I'm gonna give this art just like we do any wellington, but I remember Mr. Beast recently sent me some crazy case of merch. So because I can't draw this entire panther face, I'm just gonna do the lightning bolt. I'll carefully score the top of my wellington with this knife, then come down the side once again for the second line of the lightning bolt. Now I go down in each spot and I'll finish things off with the rest of the bolt. And hopefully, this will turn out looking pretty cool. I'll trim off all the excess of my Wellington with a knife. And once we've trimmed off that excess, I'll score the rest of my Wellington to get further patterns, because this thing's gotta look cool. To finish things off before baking, I'll go over my entire Beast Wellington. Wait, that's a perfect name for this. Oh, I, I just said that. Shh, shh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. with our egg wash to make sure we're getting that perfect golden brown look. And once it's all set, I'll bake this in the oven at 400 Fahrenheit till golden brown. As you can see, my mashed potatoes have now perfectly come together. The only problem is they're a bit clumpy. So all we really need to do is press these through a strainer and they'll come out nice and smooth. Same goes for our beef jus. It's reduced quite a bit by now and I'm actually okay with leaving a few clumps in there. So I'm simply gonna empty this into a bowl and it's ready to plate. Reminds me a little bit of the lamb sauce. Oh, oh sh Oh, oh. We've achieved a beautiful golden brown color, and we even got the lightning bolt. But I'm afraid I'll have to slice right through it. Just like opening a real beef wellington, we have the moment of truth. Hot damn! To begin plating our beast wellington, I'll come down with some mashed potatoes on a plate, then make a nice little dimple in the middle, as this is where we'll put our beef stock. Then onto my plate, I'll rest down the beast wellington, and to finish things off, I'll add in some of the onion, ketchup, and beef jus. I'll finish things off with just a few chives to give a nice bright green color. And just like that, we've done it. Time to taste. If you haven't already, go smack that like button below. Now let's dive in. I'm gonna cut into the side here. I love the corner here because the pastry always tastes really good. Also, I love the name Beast Wellington. So clever. I'm gonna get a little bit of the potato, a little bit of the sauce that Nick made. Let's go for a big bite. Mmm! This is really good. The, the ketchup onion reduction works really well with the mashed potatoes. All the flavors blend in really nicely and the puff pastry is cooked perfectly. Mr. Beast, take notes. This should be on your menu. That's great. Nice and tight. What? It's supposed to be... <laughs> It's supposed to be nice and tight, right? Like the dough around the, the tongue. You always say, like, it looks nice and tight. Get out. 